Hello! Oh my giddy aunt! What, what a weird phrase. Never really thought about that before. Anyway, yes, um, something a bit different this month. I'm not doing the normal sort of loot crate box stuff, because frankly I'm getting a little bit bored with all the stuff being very similar every month, and I've got so many figurines now with small bodies and giant heads that frankly I could fill a big bin full of shit with them. But hey, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between them and what's already in the bin. So yes, this month I'm doing some slightly different box things to mix things up a bit. So, oh no, hang on, before we go on, I have to mention, dun dun dun, the dreaded Oven Glove of Doom, uh, may literally be an Oven Glove of Doom, they've all been recalled by Loot Crate, so if you've got one, um, send it back, or at the very least, do not use it as an Oven Glove. Uh, they've been alright for the majority of people, but some people have ended up with them melting and not being effective. Mine would seem fine, but hey, your mileage may vary, and don't think, ah oh, well, you know, I'm sure the vast majority of them are fine, like 90% are fine. Yeah, you may be in that small minority that ends up with burnt fingers or something, so send them back or do whatever, just don't use them as oven gloves and don't eat them. I mean, why would you even do that? God, I worry about you people sometimes. Anyway, first up this month I'm doing something called The Toy Box. Or, in fact, two things called the Toy Box. They do two different ones, and I've got one of each, because I am a greedy man. Um, yes, I'll let me show it to you. There we are. Very minimalist packaging here. It's literally a white box with some stamps on it. Good, because that means the money has been spent more important than the things inside. So this is basically retro stuff. Uh, there is a 90s box and an 80s box, and they contain various items from that decade, preserved for you and then stuck in a cardboard box. I think the 90s one is about two quid cheaper than the 80s one, for I would imagine the very obvious reason that uh, it's, you know, easier to get stuff from the 90s and cheaper because it's not quite as old. Okay, um, the, my slight problem here is I have two. One is 80s, one is 90s, and I do not know which is which. I got a friend to open them earlier and said, can you tell me which one is 80s and which one is 90s? And he opened them up, had a look, and didn't know. So, <laughs> and obviously I couldn't say, well, tell me what's in that one, I'll tell you if it's 80s or 90s, then I'd know anyway, it spoils the prize, I might as well open them myself. So yeah, I'm just gonna open this one and see what is what. I'm not expecting much, frankly. Oh, I don't mean that in a quality sense, I mean I'm not expecting that many items for the simple reason that, you know, this stuff is uh, expensive to get hold of and source, and there's only a finite amount. It's not like you can go out and ask somebody to make some more action figures from 30 years ago, please. Right, so my understanding is there's at least a video game and a figure in each, but we shall see. I have these bloody ages, I've been able to open them for obvious reasons, so I'm quite excited to see what's inside. Thank you for your purchase, now enjoy the nostalgia. Oh, it's a little fat Nintendo Game Boy all stretched. The Toy Box, join the movement and like us on Facebook. Hey, you didn't say there was politics involved in this. Here's a slightly shoddily drawn Sonic the Hedgehog. Have you heard about our monthly subscription service? Maybe, maybe not. One thing I liked about these actually is you don't necessarily have to subscribe. You can just like buy one box and they'll send you a box and then not hassle you for the rest of your life. So Game Boy game. So this is the 80s. No, I suppose, mm, technically I suppose it's more likely to be 90s isn't it? Because, um, you know, Game Boy's out in 1989, isn't it? Well, what is this Game Boy game? I'll bet it's one I've already got. Mario and Yoshi. No! I don't have that. Well, goggly goodness. And it comes with the instruction book. I mean, normally these things have been lost in the mists of time. The uh, cardboard boxes have always been lost, of course, because they're thin cardboard boxes. Thanks, Nintendo. You try getting a mint condition N64 box or SNES box these days. My god, they disintegrate as soon as you look at them. So why is Mario I don't actually... I remember there's a game called Mario and Yoshi, I couldn't tell you what it was. Also, why am I pronouncing Mari uh, Mario as Mario? That annoys me. Um, it takes fast finger work to make Mario shuffle. It takes fast finger work to make Mario shuffle. Well, I've learned something today I didn't want to know. <sighs> Thanks for that. Um, so it's a puzzle game. Well, I'll actually play that later. Bloody hell. Well, that's a good, off to a good start, I feel. Something I would actually want. Much better than... There's going to be something with a really big head in there, isn't there? And, oh god, two sets of Pokemon cards. <laughs> I am, of course, um, not uh, particularly up on the old Pokemon. Um, I did buy Pokemon Blue when it first came out, but I never get my head into it. I think I was probably a bit old. What have we got? A Charmander, a Pikachu, a Staryu, a Starmie. Is that a better version of that? Yes, it's looks a bit. And ra ta 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 Which is like a rat. It can bite you. Marvellous. 
Well, I don't think there's any rare ones in there. If uh, the people making these boxes have any sense, they've kept those and sold them and bought 14 houses, from my understanding of how some of these go price-wise. Well, so we've got a Polyrath. Oh, look, it's it's a foil one. Isn't that good? I'm guessing so. Machop, Magma, Ponyta, and Diglett. Diglett looks like sort of crap CG, whereas the rest have all been hand-drawn. That's very odd. Hmm. It's just a poo, isn't it? It really is just a poo. There was a Doug Trio as well, wasn't there? There was three of them. Marvellous. Well, those mean nothing to me whatsoever, but um, if you're into Pokemon cards, you'll... Oh my good god, what is this? Troll for... No, I believe this is st a stone protector. Um, they all had, like, stones in them. <clears throat> That's about it, really. As you can tell, it is a sort of troll-based action figure, but they're quite nicely moulded. Do you know, I don't think I've ever seen a sto uh, stone protector up front, actually. If it isn't stone protector, forgive me, mother, for I have sinned. Interesting goggles going on. I would guess he's a welder. Is the hair supposed to be that short? Has some child cut it at one stage? I honestly don't know. I think they did have funky haircuts, so I'm going to guess that it was standard. What is this guy? He's got, like, um... Quite hefty boots with uh, very serious uh, serrated soles going on. Wearing a pair of shorts, a sort of uh, unitard thing, and then he's got like wrestler shoulder pads. Oh, the arms are articulated in that direction as well. I ah, can make rude symbols to you. Oi, oi, yeah, I've seen you. And he's got a goofy face and weird goggles. I quite like that actually. It does scream 90s in a way, doesn't it? I think it's the bright red colour and the bright blue hair and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, I like that. Anything else in here? I hope so, that would be a bit small. What have we got? Oh, oh my god, it's a mini Boglin! How did you get... Were these sold in packets or did they come with the larger Boglins? I don't know. Um, if you're not aware of Boglins, they were like uh, little ugly puppet things that um, look like goblins. I've, I've quite seriously undersold Boglins there, because they were cool. They were nifty looking things, um, like sort of evil soft toys from another dimension. And oh my god, it's a really bad one. It's, it's got its it's, I think what this one has done is rammed its finger into its eye, which has pushed it through into the other socket. See, this is the sort of thing kids' toys are missing these days. Probably for a reason. That's not the point. Oh man, this is great. What else have we got? This... Ooh, ooh, oh yes! I know what this blighter is. This is like a monster in my pocket wrestler. And I think they were given away with cereal or something, because they were quite nicely painted and most of the monster in my pockets weren't. That's what I remember. Uh, Harry Partridge told me about these once. He's got a few of them. Um, if I've got that wrong, I apologise to everyone. Is there anything else before I chuck this box around and look at the other one? No. That's rather nice. I like that. I like the stone protector. I like these little bits and pops. I particularly like the face on this one. That's amazing. It looks like somebody's scary, over-steroided granddad. Also, I don't know why I said over-steroided, as if all granddads should take a certain amount of steroids, but oh, he's taken a few too many. Yeah, um, what is my favourite? Oh, I don't know. I'm quite looking forward to the game as well. Um, I quite like them all. I'm going to say the stone protector's my favourite. Protect that crazy stone, fella. Now, fuck off. It's time for another box. Right. This will be the 80s one, then, one assumes. Or maybe there's been a horrible mix-up and it's from the year 2080 and has, like, magic in it. I don't know. Um, that's the same as last time, by the looks of it. It's bloody tea bob My God, a slightly manky tea bob <laughs> Right, uh, the story of T... Oh my god, where do we even begin with T-Bob? Um, right. Once upon a time, there was a kids' TV show called Mask that was based around toys, as was a popular thing in the 80s and probably still is now. Um, there was a really, really cool line with uh, sort of normal-looking cars and vehicles, which all look pretty cool anyway. And you'd press a button and loads of guns and wings would pop out of them. And the people driving them had special helmets on that were referred to as masks that gave them special power. Hence MASK, which is also an acronym for Mobile Armoured Strike Command, with command being a K. Uh, I did like Mask a lot, but yeah, um, the main Mask guy was a chap called uh, Matt Tracker, and he had a young son called Scott, who incidentally, if you go back and watch one of the episodes on YouTube, assuming there are any on YouTube, um, I don't know, I've got the whole lot on DVD, because that's the kind of person I am. That's why I always get swiped the wrong way on Tinder. Um, the, the, his son, Scott, the young boy, always sounds like a drunk man. It's really weird. He's always like, Ah, oh, yeah, let's, let's go and do this, T-Bob. Yeah. Anyway, because he was a spoiled little shit, his dad had made him a sort of sentient AI robot called T-Bob, which is this here robot here, in very, very shit toy form. Um, it's, it looks sort of amusing and cute now, but seriously, at the time, we were very underwhelmed with T-Bob. And it came with a little Scott Tracker figure, which might be in there somewhere, actually. 
I've seen there's like a gold figure here, and I'm quite intrigued just to see what that is, but we'll have a look in a minute. So yeah, his head moves and he transforms into a scooter, which worked, if I recall, by doing that and that. Now he's a scooter. I know that looks underwhelming, it's pretty much exactly how it happened on the TV show. Ah, T-Bob, I can't remember what your voice sounded like, but your friend was permanently drunk. What days they were. And, oh my god, what a, that's a really nice figure. This, I believe, it, oh... Right, he's got a name to do with eyeballs, something like Optic, Optical. I th I'm going to go for Optic with a K, or maybe two Ks, that's the sort of thing we got. This is a figure from the new Adventures of He-Man. There was like a second He-Man series where they went into space and did some space opera stuff, because that was making the money at the time, I presume. And I, th I will assume this is one of the bad guys, the evil mutants, as they were called. It wasn't that great... Um, a thing really, mainly because He-Man and Skeletor were, um, were all appearing in it again, but their figures and designs were a bit crap in it really. But some of the figures were great, and this is one of the best I've seen actually. I've got a few of them for a future um, fake He-Man figure special where I was going to crack a few out and uh, show them off. This is really... It, some of these figures are really nice. The articulation is decent. Um, you can actually spin the eye around like that, which is quite beautiful in its own sense. And it's also got that totally pointless uh, He-Man thing in the arms, which annoys me. But never mind, we'll live without that. Yeah, that's great. I genuinely really like that figure. Um, something deeply unpleasant about it. It's just the giant eyeball, really, isn't it? Think of that. You're walking along, a bird flies directly into your retina. It's going to be a bad weekday. I've just realized, do you think it's like a sort of Andrew? Is this like a Krang from um, Ninja Turtles, where it's just kind of a big eye in a robot suit? And, ugh, and there's actually no body. I don't know. I'm really overthinking this character. Next. Oh, there's something in here. It's, ooh. Oh, I know what that is on top of that. It's Mike Young's fam fabulous book, Super Ted on Planet Spot. Now we're talking, fellas. Oh, my goodness. Yes, yeah, Super Ted was a British show, and if you're not aware of it, which you're probably not because you're probably too young or too not British, um, basically he was a teddy bear who said a magic word and turned into Super Ted, who's like a slightly ineffective superhero. And he was given his powers by his best friend Spotty, who also acted as his sidekick. Which, now I'm older, makes no sense. He's got the magic powers that can bring people to life and give them superpowers, and yet he's a sidekick. Super Ted is no ordinary bear. He is a teddy bear who can change into Super Ted by whispering a special secret word that only he knows. It was later revealed that word was buttress. Whether at home in his treehouse deep in the forest or up in his space station orbiting Earth, his main mission is to protect children and animals, particularly from the schemes of the evil Texas Pete. I don't know why somebody called Texas Pete who looked like a cowboy was constantly hassling people in the British countryside, but there we go. And his bungling cronies bulk and skeleton. Super Ted and his friend Spotty Man must try and outwit the terrible trio. Super Ted stars an exciting new television series. Now you can follow his adventures in this further series of magic tales. 75p net. Marvellous. That shows you how old it is just from the... Uh, from the... Yep, here we are. That's... Uh, what is that? Blotch. Is that Spotty's wife or something? I've got no idea. Can we... Uh... Yeah, there's Texas Pete ripping a woman's jaw off. Oh, Texas Pete, you are a one. Whilst he holds something that looks like a mana potion. Um, yeah, there's Texas Pete's crash landed near some bones. Or is that the skeleton bloke? Ah, there's Skeleton. Skeleton was voiced by Melvin Hayes, and once at Norwich Theatre Royal, I went to see a live version of Super Ted starring... Uh, in fact, Melvin Hayes starred as the skeleton. Although was far less skeleton -y. He was more like Melvin Hayes with some makeup on. But those were the days. I'm going to say the, fra the name Melvin Hayes one last time. Look him up! He's very um, <clears throat> distinctive. He might be dead now. I honestly have no idea. He'd be very old if he's still alive. Ah, right. Transformers, robots in disguise. I think this is one of the MicroMaster Transformers. I'm pretty sure I actually had this one. Um, yeah. The MicroMaster ones were small, and they were made to uh, compete with Micro Machines, which were a big thing, although they were considerably bigger than those. But they did still transform, just not in quite as an impressive way as the uh, larger ones. For instance, this is literally, look, the robot's underneath, and you go... And bend the legs up, and... There we are. Hello, I'm a robot whose legs are stuck together. But it's all good fun, in it? It's not in bad nick, considering, either. Hmm, what is that plane he turned? a sort of weird futuristic aircraft thing going on. I like it. I like the design. I always did. I think that's why I bought it back in the day. And next we have... Oh my goodness, what is this? A Frogger cartridge. 
for the Atari 2600, I think. It's the bloody Parker Brothers! This week on Gokzak References, made in Malaysia. Mm, do you know, I don't have... I've got several uh, Atari 2600 cartridges, but nothing which will actually um, play them. Hmm. I don't have one of this shape. Is this like an American one or something? You see, I'm intrigued now. Is this an Atari 2600? Oh, man! This is frustrating me now. I really want to know what this is. I'm guessing it's an Atari 2600 cartridge. If not, I'll do that thing where I put an annoying annotation over the top that people on mobile can't see. How's about that, then? And finally... Um, no, there's anything else, actually. Damn, I oversold it by saying, and finally, just assuming there was something else when there weren't. So in that one, we have Nifty Figure, Ancient Game, T-Bob, not to be confused with T-Bag, who is very rude when he wins something the video game-wise, and a Transformer I will never remember the name of. That's nice. I like all that. I, uh, yeah, I'm enjoying this far more than bloody Big Head City that's currently going on in all the uh, Loot Crate and 1UP box and all that kind of thing. There we are, that's a bit different then. Go have a look at the website, I'll link it down below if you like that sort of thing. And if you don't like that sort of thing, don't look at the website, because, I mean, you'd be wasting your time. What the hell is wrong with you? Seriously! Right, cut of the jump. Had a quick check, and yes, indeed, it is an Atari 2600 cartridge. I was confused. I'd never actually seen one of this design before. I'm used to the old-fashioned, um, you know, square ones that look more like this, and even the um, crappy ones you'd get through mail order with shit labels on had that design. So there we are. Well done, Frogger. You look a bit different, like. OK, next up on the agenda of fun... Aki Bento! Fuck, this is the wrong box! <laughs> Spoilers! <laughs> Where's the other one? It looks really similar. Ah, oh, well, actually, it's considerably more red, but never mind. Aki Bent! <laughs> we got there in the end. Oh my goodness, right. So the concept behind this one is it's a load of anime stuff. People are always hassling me to do these, despite the fact I know, frankly, piss all about anime. So I'm not going to know what anything in the box is, am I? But no. Oh, oh, that's right. I thought I hadn't um, cut the silver tape for a minute, which is always fatal. Right, so what have we got then, guys? We've got an exclusive stress ball with a really creepy face. I reckon I have seen that face, other than in my nightmares. Couldn't tell you what it's from, though. I do like a nice stress ball. I'm not sure I want one quite that creepy, but thanks for that. I can now sleep well. No, wait, the other one. T-shirt is of... Um, hmm. Hmm. And again, hmm. It's like a big... Right, um... There's, there's like a motorcycle, and there's a schoolgirl like resting against it, and there's some sort of um, blobby black fella there, I, who's like a demon or robot. So I don't bloody know what the hell that is, frankly. Does it give me a hint on the label? No, Gildan self Star Rings Band. Marvellous. Well, it's a nice enough t-shirt and design, but I have no freaking idea what it is. See, I told you this wouldn't work, but oh no, we got to do one of these to you. Oh yeah. That's how you speak, that is. Next up, The Seven Deadly Sins. I've got to say, doesn't look very deadly. Doesn't look very silly. He looks quite happy, if anything. But not as happy as her. She's leaping for joy because she can only see out of one eye due to a misfunctioning haircut. Right, what's the story here? Welcome to the land of Britannia. Kind of been there for a while, mate. A picturesque country ruled by the benevolent King Leones, or at least it was, until the King's Guard assassinated him and started a full-blown holy war. Jamie Lannister, that is again. Now the king's only daughter Elizabeth must seek the aid of the dreaded warriors, the Seven Deadly Sins. Wrongly framed and sent into exile, they're now the princess's only hope to free the kingdom from the grip of the villainous Holy Knights. Also, funny pig. Um, fair enough. I might read that at some stage. In fact, I probably will. I do like a good uh, read of things. There we are. I've read it all now. Hope that didn't spoil the end for you. Go on, what's next? Best... Oh, frickin' ass! It's a bloody chibi-style waste of plastic gubbins. Right, which one of these do I recognise? Um, those three are from Attack on Titan. And that's my entire knowledge put uh, there. That's marvellous. Um, for real, Black Butler? Black Butler, Attack on Titan? So this is from three different animes. No, four! Oh no, wait, so no, five. Soul Eater, Sword Art Online, 
Attack on Titan, Black Butler, and Fairy Tale. I've literally never heard of any of them. Well, well, I've heard of Attack on Titan. I have heard of Sword Art Online. I think it's the one about a um, sort of online virtual reality game that if you die in it, you die in real life. You know, a bit like a plunk. Right. What is in this one? Which one do I actually want out of this? Um, the only one that's really amusing me would be the Titan uh, with its skin off and its weird, heavy brows. Right. It is inside a black bin bag, and it is uh, one of the Attack on Titan guys. Can't remember any of the names now. I only watched a couple of episodes. Couldn't get on with it. Well, it's nicely enough detailed. It's got his little logo on the back. He's got his sword things and his uh, system for flying up in the air and all that with the wires and his head's too big and. I thought I'd escape from that this month. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, we've got a badge. The badge says Akibento Fantasy. Come on, guys. Why do you do that? What? Don't we just want things from franchises we want? Don't, don't try and make yourselves a thing. Akibento Pillowcase? That's a new one. Bloody hell. Hang on. Let's get this open. I want to see the sound of pillowcase. I'll bet it's horrifying. Oh, it feels like a really high quality one, actually. Bloody hell. Um, oh, yep. And we've got cutesy people with giant heads. Oh, hooray. Running away from somebody who's fallen over and is crying. And there might be a UFO or something coming. I have no idea what that is from or in relation to. I've got to say, it's a very nice case. It looks much bigger than any pillows I have. But... Uh, Oh, that's really nice. That's a new one, that pillowcase, isn't it? More of that sort of thing, please, people. Something a bit uh, less obvious. And what is this? Is it like a magnet thing? Vampire knight. He's a vampire and yet also a knight. My God, what a twist. Um, I, think it's a, I think it's another book, actually. Let's have a look. Here we come. Oh. See, uh, this is what we in the trade call an empty book. Well, that's if you happen to really like Vampire Nights and want something to write on where it will slightly obscure what you've written, there is no finer thing than that. And finally, we have the Gubbins booklet. They all have one of these, don't they? Fantasy. Ah, that looks perfectly realistic to me. Also, I've been sniffing paint. Right, um, blah, blah, blah. Well, it says what it is. Punch ball, mystery anime notebook, supernatural pillowcase. Oh god, it's haunted. Now you're telling me you've taken out the bloody packet. Series of anime series, blah, 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 blah. Well, that was that then. I'm going to be honest, that was more like a standard uh, mystery box thing than I was expecting for some reason. Um, I don't know why I expected that to be different just because it had anime stuff in it, but there we go. Well, the pillowcase was different, wasn't it? Ah, oh, sod. Right, so let's get rid of all this and get some snacks on. So munch pack then. Glad I didn't spoil that one earlier. Right, what have we got in it this time? Is it all from a specific country or just random gubbins? I don't know, but we can apparently follow them on Snapchat. Marvellous. Oh, that reminds me. Um, I have just set up a Snapchat, which I'm going to start using soon to uh, occasionally tease future videos using the medium of pictures. I'll uh, link it down below, below all the links to these boxes and things. <laughs> Um, snack scanner. Learn more about the snacks you receive in your munch pack. Can't be asked, but thanks for the offer. Right, what we got then? We have... Oh my goodness, right. Time for some jump cuts, I think. Chili bangs! Coated candy with 100% tamarind pulp centre. Tremendous. Are they chili flavoured as well, just to really make it unpleasant? I don't know. They're like slightly large jelly beans with a doppled effect. Ooh. Ooh. I'm not a big fan of tamarind. Oh, that's disgusting. Oh. Oh. Oh, there is a hint of chilli as well. Oh, they're really fucking horrible. Oh. Oh, bad start. Oh, I should have had the cheese balls. Oh, man. Oh, that is not my sort of thing at all. <laughs> oh, God. Ah, oh, you can't go wrong with popping candy, even if it is from World's Crack Ups, which is a bit weird. Super popping power, green apple. Ah, here we go. Don't forget to uh, drink a load of water, then have a load of this, and then explode or something. 
Ah, those shards of sugar that pop on the tongue. Oh. Ow. Um, yeah. It's that slightly sour apple flavour that the Americans tend to go for. Um, ah, these in fact come from Brooklyn, product of China. Well, I um, managed to get that one wrong and corrected pretty quickly, didn't I? It's nice enough, but all this stuff tastes very chemically, doesn't it? It's no different than what you'd expect, to be honest. Cheese balls! Now there's an ailment you don't want to go to the doctor with. Masala cheese flavour. Masala cheese? I don't know. Uh, masala's a spice. That would be interesting. Let's have a cheese ball. They look very much as I expected them to look. Um, yeah. Oh god, they're really, really spicy. Like, very hot, actually. Blimey, I was not expecting that. Um, yeah, they're incredibly spicy and they have sort of an undercurrent of uh, che <coughs> oh, cheese going on. My god. They're so spicy, they <coughs> give them the hiccups. Oh. <laughs> My god, those took me by surprise. Whoa, it's incredibly spicy. They're from Pakistan, incidentally. I checked on the back there. Right, Hai Chu from Morinaga. Morinaga sounds like a villain from a Bond film. Um, for a refreshing bite-sized chewy fruit candy. Oh, I was assuming they said Hai Chu, that they were going to be um, bubblegum for some reason. Right, what we got then? Um, two flavours in one bag, grape and yet also strawberry. Um, I'm going to take one of each and put them in my mouth at the same time because that's the kind of madness we do here. Also, I'm not going to keep talking for the next 40 years while trying to open this goddamn packet. Why did I cut my nails just before filming this? I've doomed myself, right? Ugh, that's better. Um, well, I don't understand this because I'm here enlarged to show texture and all that sort of stuff. Um, they're all actually exactly the same colour. They don't appear to be any different at all, so I'm just going to have one because I'm not going to be able to tell the other way. Mm. That is... Um, a bit artificial strawberry-like, and quite grapey. Maybe it's all both those flavours mixed together. Yeah, all right, but slightly chemically, but not too bad. And now, from Siam Foods in Thailand, it's... Super tasty biscuit stick! <laughs> With the world's shittest Pokemon. Right, I'm guessing the flavour will be something. One way to find out. Oh my goodness. They're very glossy. Look like somebody's gone over them with some varnish. Oh dear. They taste like slightly sweet wood, is how I would describe it. Like somebody got a bit of chipboard and glazed it with sh um, mild sugar. Yeah, they're not great. Not to worry, Varata del Maquito, no, Varata del Maquito will save us with its um, fruit flavour. Caramel with uh, fruit flavour, I think that means. Let's have a look. I don't know how I can actually tell it by looking at it, but... Oh god. This looks like something used in an industrial process. You know, something... Yeah, we add a bit of this to the chemicals and it makes them hold together better. Uh, oh, oh. oh god, it's something that gets stuck in your teeth for the next 40 years. Ooh. This is odd. This tastes exactly of that kind of generic fruit-flavoured bubblegum you can get. In fact, I'm going to assume this is just bubblegum. No, it's not bubblegum, because it's um, disintegrating in the mouth. It is some sort of caramel stuff. That's the first sweet I've ever had that exactly tastes um, like that sort of hubba bubba bubblegum flavour you get. That's interesting. I quite like that. Something different, in it? And now from Lottie, or Lotta, or Lot, it's plus calcium. Um, uh, wheat biscuits full of poo? Genuinely don't know. Um, not a lot of me. Ah, cereal choco. Ah. Uh, I'm guessing it's a cereal and chocolate combination, and I don't think anyone's going to disagree with me. Um, they're in foil, and inside the foil they look like... Oh, things that go everywhere on the sofa, apparently. That's marvellous. Yeah, a bit like those... Um... God, what was that cereal um, that was doing the rounds ages ago, and all the YouTubers got paid a fortune for doing it? Except me, obviously, because I'm too old and I smell. Um, oh, I don't know, it's like a chocolate in cereal. I can't remember what it's bloody called. Cool. I'll crunch it. Ooh. Well, it's not that bad, actually. 
the cereal is one of those quite highly flavoured ones that um, took me by surprise at first. And the chocolate's a bit tasteless, but they're not bad. They're not something you'd say, oh, that's horrible or anything. But they're very bland. Very bland. Sour Patch Fruits. Sour, then sweet. You can just buy these here. They're called Sour Patch Kids, and they all look like that one. I remember. Well, I'll have one for the look of it. But um, been there, done that. Yep. They're very sour. Fruit flavour's quite good. Yep, they're very nice. They're exactly the same as what you get here. London roll? Really? Mango flavoured from Kek Gulung. That's, um, hmm. And it looks like a, one of those little um, chocolate roll things. Yes, yeah, Swiss roll they call them, don't they? Or mini roll. That's it. Cadbury's mini roll, except it's a funny colour. It's got mango in the middle and it's called London for some reason. Uh, oh, God. Oh, man. It's got a really weird texture. This feels like something you should be um, taking the edges off your nails with. Hmm. Exactly as you'd expect. That sort of weird, artificially flavoured, um, generic baked goods sort of stuff you get that feels just like it's full of preservatives and that's about it really. And the filling, I can't actually get any hint of mango at all really, it's just kind of sweet. That's a bit crap. It's one of these! At last! Um, yeah. Sunflower seed brittle with fructose. Now we're talking. I haven't been getting enough fruit sugar in my diet, I'm sure, so this will be marvellous. There we are. I'll break it. God, it's very hard. Well, it is brittle, isn't it? I'll just try a bit there. Um, product of Ukraine. <laughs> Store at 65 degrees Fahrenheit. One degree either way, and it will explode. Um, well, no, they're good actually. It kind of just tastes of seeds, isn't very sweet, but still feels like it's destroying your teeth. So while that's quite astonishing, it's not really a good thing. And finally, Choco Flavour Home Run Ball! Cocoa powder, 3%. Our son Pat is a bit nifty with a bat. British people of a certain age will now be saying, you bastard, you just reminded me of that rubbish. Right, what are these like? They are impenetrable, apparently. Oh god, they've gone everywhere. <laughs> well, that was going, wasn't it? Um, oh god, the little manky looking puffs, hard puffs of nothing with the ch I'm not looking forward to this. Oh god. Yeah, not very really chocolatey. Ugh. These are basically the world's shittest profiteroles. <laughs> Right, that's enough of that. Anyway, there we go then. Something a bit different this month, but only a little bit, because we ended up doing a munch pack, and frankly, an anime thing that wasn't that different from what we normally do. But hey, we had some fun with some old figures, didn't we? Please pretend and say yes. Subscribe for Melvin.